everybody, and welcome to another episode of Five Questions with the Paulist Fathers. And you know, the nation's capital turns out a lot of good folks, and that's where all our Paulist seminarians are. And Chris Lawton is getting ready to take his final promises and to be ordained to the diaconate. And uh, Chris, welcome to Five Questions with the Paulist. Thanks, Mike. I'm really grateful to be having the conversation with you. Yeah, that's great. Let's get right into it. Hey, number one is, uh, what aspect of life as a Paul seminarian really surprised you the most? Like something you never expected when you entered the novitiate? You know, one of the things that I didn't expect was how much this place feels like a family that most people would be used to. You know, I, I came in thinking like, oh, maybe this is like, you know, this experience of rhythm of prayer and it's very quiet and very strict. And of course, prayer and um, meals and ministry and school, there's a rhythm to our day. But in many ways, this is like a normal family life. You know, you have these people that you know very well and you care for them deeply. You know, as brothers, we love our community. Um, you laugh, you do the dishes, you sometimes drive each other nuts. Um, sometimes you're really inspired and energized by the people around you, reminded why you are committing to this. Um, but it's, you know, the, the dynamics and the experience of life here is often kind of normal, like family life that most people would be used to. And uh, I sometimes tell my own biological family, you know, days here are a lot like days probably in your house, you know? So I think that was a surprise. I, I don't know. I thought this would be something very separate from the world and maybe different in sort of the dynamics and relationships. And of course there are differences, right? This is a unique way of living, but in a lot of ways, it's like normal family life. Yeah. Priests are people too. <laughs> Priests are people too. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Question two, uh, you're a medical doctor. And uh, so what's the most notable part of that life that you've been able to carry over into ministry? Oh, well, I had a mentor that once said that um, doctors should be some of the best uh, interviewers yeah. on the planet. They should be able to capture someone's story very well and receive someone's story very well. And of course you want doctors, nurses, healthcare providers to really be able to listen well, to hear your whole story and then to translate that into whatever needs to happen next for your wellness, right? So I think the same is true for good spiritual care providers, ministers, pastors, priests, religious, that we're being trained here to listen well, to really listen to people's stories. Sometimes in this world, it feels like that's actually the most important intervention. It's just listening well, because um, that's such a powerful thing. And most of us probably don't experience enough of it. But I think um, hearing people's stories and receiving stories and then reflecting on how that, from the perspective of our faith, might translate us into action, to caring for one another, I think that's such a big part of this world. And I think it was a big part of really good healthcare too. How do we listen and how do we receive people's stories? Indeed, yeah. I, I was the chaplain of the medical school uh, at, in Buffalo. And that was the one thing that the doctors always said, you, got, you have definitely helped us learn how to listen better. Mm. And I was like, if that's the one gift I can give you, great. Because you guys gave me so much. You know, it was great being there. No, it is. It is. I mean, my favorite religion teacher, my favorite teacher of all time, actually, I'd have to say, my favorite teacher, um, she used to say, what are we here to do if it's not to tell our story, right? And doesn't everyone want to tell their story and know that someone is hearing it, right? Yeah. And, and that's such a just important way we connect. So yeah, listening well, listening well. Question three. Uh, so as a seminarian, you've been able to give reflections during mass as a way to prepare for preaching homilies. I was blessed to hear one in Chicago one day. Um, what, what's one piece of advice that you would give to someone who has to preach on the scriptures? Hmm. There's a lot of uh, advice that we're given, a lot of advice I'm trying to absorb. Um, so I will say the the most important thing that I'm working on right now is one message, one nugget 
one theme, uh, one takeaway, you know, just focusing in on one thing. There's this temptation, I feel it in my own life. Maybe it's also partly a medical, you know, holdover. We just, we wanna do all the things. We don't wanna miss anything. Uh, we wanna to speak to everyone and everything. And I feel challenged. And I think the best preachers I know, they do the hard work of making one through line, one thread, one thing. So I, I think that's the most important thing. I also know that when I listen to a homily, when I listen to someone reflecting on scripture, I feel most grounded and I keep reflecting on the message when it was really clear what that one pearl, we, we often say the pearl or one of my preaching professors says, right, from scripture, the pearl of great price, you know, what was that pearl? When someone does the hard work, right? I mean, you and I both know this, the hard work of making it one thing. So that's my, that's the one. And I say it, Mike, because I'm working on it. It's hard for me. Too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> we we often say in um, in homiletics class to someone who who is talking about more than one thing, we always say, "John, you had three good and distinct homilies today." <laughs> That's right. It's hard, and I, I it's hard to get that feedback because you're like, "But yeah. weren't all of them so important?" And it's like maybe, but we only had this was this was just today, right. just not today. Right? We didn't need three; we needed one. That's right. <laughs> Okay, so question four. Uh, if you had a family member or a friend who told you that they were thinking about not going to Mass anymore, what would you say to them to give them hope? Um, so I do have uh, just yeah. those people in my life. And um, I would say, I do say, oh, we need you. We really need you. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, Pope Francis in a really unprecedented way in my lifetime is saying, we need your questions. We need your perspective. We need your challenges. Uh, we need your story. Um, not because this church isn't conveying an enduring truth and truths to the world, but because of course we wanna be open in the way that Christ was and is open to journey with everyone uh, oh, we need you. And if you are frustrated or upset or uninspired, would you stay long enough to, to speak about that with someone in the community who you feel you can trust, you know? Um, and if there isn't anyone, uh, perhaps it's an opportunity to get to know some folks more, or perhaps it's an opportunity to find someone in your life who is either on a similar place in their own journey, or maybe someone, I mean, I, in my own family, I don't certainly don't pretend to have all the answers. I get nervous about people that do, but, oh my gosh, like, can we talk about it? Uh, I'd love to know where you are. And I do believe as Paulus, especially in the line of St. Paul, you know, we have this just enduring belief and knowledge that everyone has something unique and important to bring to the life of our church. And so to lose, I think, especially of young people, I think of young adults, uh, you know, people in my family and friends who might say, oh, you know, Mike, I don't know. I just, I don't think it's worth, you know, going. I'm not sure why I'm here. Uh, talking about what it is that you receive from the church, but what it is that you might bring and how does what you would bring transform your experience of being there. Um, it also requires that we have communities ready to be open to people's unique stories, perspectives, and unique gifts. And that's a big, that calls us to be better, right? Ministers right. in the church to really be ready to walk with people and to work with folks to figure out where might you be a part of the community and bring those gifts. So, um, oh, we need you. We need you in, in such, a, such a deep way. And to lose you is, is, is uh, just a tragedy for us, right? So yeah. we need you. Great, Chris. Thanks. And finally, question five, uh, you're on a desert island and uh, you have the scriptures with you already, so you can't choose that. But what's a book or a piece of music that you'd like to have with you? Uh, I'll give you I'll give you one of each. Um, sure. My book would be uh, Father Richard Rohr's Falling Upward. Oh, very nice. That would be very, very uh, important for me. And then the the music would be uh, you too, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. 
<laughs> That's great. Uh, Desert Iowa, that would really work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Right? I didn't think about that. That was it's deeply meaningful to me, but I suppose on a desert island. Yeah, that would be good. Exactly. Not to, not <laughs> Hello, search and rescue. <laughs> That's great, Chris. Chris, congratulations on uh heading toward final promises in a couple weeks and um and being ordained to the diaconate. Um, you're gonna be great. So thanks for all you do and uh for all the study that you've done. And uh you're gonna be a great polis. So you're already a great polis, but you're gonna be a great deacon and a great priest one day. So know that we're praying for you and continue to pray for us on your journey as you complete it. Oh, I will do that. And uh, Mike, I appreciate this. I appreciate uh, you're helping all of us in our Paulist network and beyond get to know a few more stories and a little more perspective about this life. I mean, this this really means a lot. So thank you. And thank you for those prayers. I, I need them. And I and I pray with you um, for all the people that are connected to this mission and uh, and its continuation. Sure. So this has been Five Questions with Paulus. I'm Mike Hayes. He is Chris Lawton, and we will see you again next time.